Crafties, welcome to another Tunisian Tuesday. My name is Infinity and today I am back again with yet another tutorial. So if you guys have been following me for any substantial length of time, you'll know that cables are my absolute favorite stitch. Most of my pattern designs um, include cables and I'm just a fanatic. So today I wanted to show you guys how to go about making cables with Tunisian crochet. It can be a little fiddly when you first start out with it, but you know, practice makes perfect and there's, you work the stitches, it gets less fiddly and they become fun and all that. So um, before we start today's tutorial, what I want to mention is your supply list. So along with your standard like stitch markers maybe, um, snips things like that, you're going to want an extra crochet hook. I have an extra Tunisian hook at my desk today. Um, you might also find that you want a actual cable needle. Now this is typically a knitting supply. I will be posting links to these things down in my description below, so if you're wanting to try this out, if you are also wanting to try knitting out, you'll have these supplies at your fingertips. So. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started with the tutorial. Alright guys, so the way that I like to work this stitch is I like to chain in increments of 20. So you're going to start with your slip knot. If you don't know how to do a slip knot, I'm sure I'll have a tutorial back on my channel that you can watch for that. So, I'm going to chain 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So now that we have 20 chains, what we're going to do is work our foundation chain. Um, this is not a beginner tutorial. I should have said that sooner. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you don't know how to cast on in Tunisian crochet, there's another tutorial for that back on my channel. All right, so now I have cast on my stitches. I should have 20 loops here on my hook and I'm going to count them because I'm paranoid. <laughs> so, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Never hurts to double check. Now I'm going to do a returning pass. So that is yarning over and chaining one do that first loop and then we're going to yarn over and pull through two until we reach the end and we only have one loop left on our hook.
All right, so now that I have done my first returning pass, what I want to do is start my pattern. So I'm gonna be using this guy as a reference. Um, it's really, really, really repetitive. <laughs> so what I want to do actually for this is to, can you guys see that? Okay, what I want to do is build up a few rows before we get to this initial twist. And I think I want to do a couple more rows than I did in this swatch so I don't have this weird, uneven, kind of flat thing that Cable likes to do. So I'm gonna to toss him to the side. And what I'm going to do to start this is, first of all, we're gonna purl one. So again, skipping this first stitch, we never work into this first stitch that's technically already purled. What we want to do is bring our yard to the front. I hope I said yarn and not yard. And we're going to insert our hook into that vertical bar. And we're going to work our purl stitch. Then what I want to do is work two knit stitches. So inserting my hook into that vertical bar and coming out the back with it. And then yarning over, pulling up a loop. Then I'm going to do that in the next stitch as well, making that second knit stitch. Awesome. Now what I want to do is pull my yarn forward and I'm going to do two purl stitches. So... There's one. We're going to do it again. Awesome. So now across the next eight stitches, what we're going to do is knit stitch. So again, that is inserting your hook through the vertical bar and coming out the back. Yarn over, pull up a loop. And we're going to do that in the next seven stitches. So there's two. There's And you'll notice as you work these stitches, they kind of separate themselves on your hook. So you, if you ever get lost in your pattern, you're going to notice like, oh yeah, I did two purls, two knit, two purls, and I went into my knit stitches. Just a little helpful tip. One more. Forgive any background noise that you might hear. My camera picks up everything. <laughs> okay, so now that we've gotten our eight knit stitches, what we want to do is bring our yarn forward and we're going to repeat the pattern from the other side and we're going to purl two. Then we're gonna knit two. Let me know down in the comments below, do you hear this weird echoey sound that I hear? It's strange. I hope not. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna bring my yarn forward and we're going to purl two again. All right, so we are going to do another returning pass. Of course, returning passes are always the same. You're gonna chain one through that first loop and then you're gonna pull through two, pull through two, pull through, through two until the end of your row where you only have one stitch left on your hook. All right, guys, so I have done my returning pass and what I want to do going forward, um, I want to do about four or five more sets of the pattern we just did, which I will repeat 
another time so you guys can remember. Um, looking at the sides of my work, I have two rows as I count them. Um, so I want at least four more of these stitches going up the side. So what I'm going to do is bring my yarn forward and I'm going to purl that second stitch of this row. Go ahead and kind of zoom in, I suppose. All right. And then what I want to do is I'm going to knit the next two. So one, knit the next one, two. Okay. And then I'm going to bring my yarn forward because I want to purl two. We're going to knit eight. So insert your hook under that vertical bar and come out the back. We're gonna yarn over and we are going to pull up a loop. Now my recommendation would be to do this stitch fairly loose. Um, when you come in with that second crochet hook, you may want to use like a half size up. I used a half size down because it was close by. <laughs> so um, I'd probably use a 6-0 um, instead of a 5-0 next time. But hey, just make sure your tension is good because it's going to be important later. All right, and I'm going to knit my other seven stitches along this row. And if at any point you have extra questions about this stitch, go ahead and leave me a comment down below and I will do my best to answer your questions. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Alright, now I'm going to go back to purl two. I'm going to knit two. And then I'm going to purl the last two stitches along this row. It can be a little interesting to see. So you might have to kind of tug on your stitches to see them. But I got this vertical bar. And then the last vertical bar is this guy. Okay, and now I'm going to do my returning pass. So meet me back here when you have seven rows. Alright guys, so I've worked up my pattern up to seven rows. Well, technically 14 rows, but on the side when you count it, it's like seven. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start off my row as I have previously with my purl one. Then I'm going to knit two. Two. And I'm going to purl two. Now this is a twisting row. We're going to be working our first twist for our cable. So to do this, you're going to want to have that second crochet hook and or um, another knitting needle or a cabling hook, I mean sorry, a cabling needle. I'm gonna purl that second one, good gosh. Wrong stitch. Okay. Now, what we're going to do today is we're gonna skip the first four stitches in this little section right here. So, just wanna count them carefully. 
my one, two, three, four. And we are going to insert our hook into that fifth knit stitch. And we are going to work a knit stitch. Now what you don't want to do is pull this too tight. So be sure that you're working your tension so that your cable isn't too tight, especially if you're using a smaller crochet hook for the second part of the cable. So pulled up that loop. We're going to work the next three. There's two, three, and four. Now we got to go back and work the four that we skipped and this is where the second um, Tunisian hook comes in. This one for me is a five and a half millimeter. So I'm just going to insert it into that first stitch that we um, skipped. Let it go out the back. Then I'm going to grab my working yarn and gently <laughs> yarn over and pull it through. So with my swatch, which I will bring back in just a second, I um, I might have worked those stitches a little tightly, so it twisted on me more than I wanted it to. Okay, now we're going to work that second stitch and then that third stitch and then that fourth stitch. Now I've worked these loops a little more loosely than five millimeter uh, hooks would typically allow but that's because I'm using a 5.5 five for my main stitches and I don't want it too tight because if you see down here let me zoom out some out um, down here was my first cable and y'all may or may not know how tight my tension is but it was pretty uh, snug right here it was kind of wonky trying to work up my rows plus it has this unflattering little ripple which I mean you could block if you accidentally you know tension your yarn too much but if you know the ultimate goal is like not having to do that so don't do what I did now what I'm going to do is take my cable needle. Now if you have a knitting needle or I've even for my other swatch I used a darning needle and just slipped the stitches on there. As long as you have a long pointy object to slip these stitches onto, it'll work out just fine. And I'm just going to slip that on there alongside my hook and then I can actually remove my hook and put it to the side. So you don't have to do this twisting very often depending on your pattern, thankfully. <laughs> um, now what we want to do is bring these stitches forward. We're going to be twisting our stitches. So let me zoom back in because that would be helpful. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is kind of tug these this way and I'm going to pull these this way and I'm just going to reinsert my main hook onto these stitches and then I'm going to slip that out and you can kind of spread it out if your stitches aren't too tight otherwise we can just work them out the further we go so now that we've done that we can go on and we're going to purl two in the next two stitches so there's one And then we're going to go ahead and get that second one. Let's zoom back out. Alright, now we can work our two knit stitches. So, one. And then there's another one right here. That makes two. And, let's see. Then we're going to purl our last two stitches. So, there's one, and then the second one, we actually want to purl that, we're going to purl it. Okay, and that is the end of that row. Now you can try to kind of stretch these out, but they'll become more spread out and flatten out as you work up your rows. And see, in this one, this stitch 
relatively works up flat so that's the cool part and that's why you don't want that bunching up down here and by working those rows those initial rows you kind of get that effect and then by watching your tension up here at this twist you can totally avoid that scrunching up problem you might still have to block it but you also might not have to so that's an awesome thing so right now we're going to work our returning pass which is going to be a little wonky um, for this initial one just because of what we just did <laughs> so I'm going to do that chain one and you're going to yarn over and pull through two yarn over pull through two and so on and so on now I'm going to yarn over and pull through two and you can just work this section a little slower just to make sure you are doing it properly I'm going to yarn over and pull through two gonna yarn over and pull through two yarn over and this is why I mentioned you might want to use a bigger hook because those stitches that we um we skipped and then reworked they're kind of a booger kind of a booger if your tension isn't right. So, one, two. Okay. See, fixing this is such a pain. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go ahead and yarn over and pull through two now. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through. Two. Now back to normality. Pull through two. Pull through two. Pull through two. And those last two. Oh, what a nightmare. So, <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're going to work up six more rows of that initial, like those initial stitches. So the purling one, then knit two, purl two, then you're going to knit eight, then you're going to go back to purling two, knitting two, purling two. And we're going to do that for um, six more sets or 12 more rows, and then I'll meet you back when I have established that swatch. Alright guys, so I have finished my six rows going up, and this is what I have so far. And as you can see, our twist came out to be really evident. Um, so after you work up those six rows, what you would want to do on your seventh row is to do another twist, much like I did here in my sample. Um, you know... <laughs> And it comes out really nice just working that repetition. So as you can see, you don't really have to do those twists often at all. And it gives you a pretty standard sized cable. Now if you wanted to make it more scrunched up, I'm sure you could do it with less rows in between your twists. However, that's not how I prefer to work it <laughs> um, for many different reasons. So like I said, you'd want to kick off um, row what, 7? well technically 14, 15, um, with a repeat of that twist row. So you know already that you're going to be inserting your hook into that second vertical bar of this row, which can be kind of tricky to see, so watch out for that. And you are going to purl, just like so. And you're going to knit two. And then you're going to come on and purl two. And I can't stress enough, tension is so important with this stitch, guys. Okay. So then you would skip the four stitches. One, two, three, four. 
and you would go ahead and knit in that fifth stitch being careful not to pull on your yarn too much or make your tension too tight and you'd go ahead and work those other three knit stitches cool okay so then we're going to go ahead and grab our other Tunisian hook and we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch that we skipped we're going to bring our yarn all the way over and make a knit stitch. Again, don't tug too hard, guys. Three. Now we want to get our cable needle and we're just going to insert it in those four stitches so that we can slide off this crochet hook like so. And then we want to bring it forward and we're going to do our little crisscross yet again. So hopefully with this one I don't drop my stitches. This is probably, again, the trickiest part of this stitch. Okay. And to me, it's always a little bit looser the second time around. So, if you're not getting your tension right the first time, you need to start over or just keep at it until you get it right. <laughs> so now we're going to bring the yarn forward and we're going to purl. to the right stitch. Yeah, there we go. I was right, guys. I was right. Purl. And then we're going to insert and purl in that next stitch. And then we're going to knit two. We're going to bring the yarn forward and we're going to purl. Alright. And now what we're going to do is do our returning pass, which again is chaining one. We're going to pull through, yarn over and pull through two all the way across alrighty alrighty so now let's say you're at the point where you want to cast off now you could cast off in the normal way um, I found it kind of fun to follow the pattern and cast off so I would do I would make my stitch like I'm going to purl but instead I'm just gonna slip stitch and then in my knit stitches, I would just act like I'm going to knit stitch and then slip stitch. Then I'm back to my purls. Slip stitch through there. And so on and so on. Until I reached the end of this row. Now, I would probably work up normally more rows over that twist so it wouldn't be as uneven as it is here. Um, so keep that in mind as you finish your projects. You might want to do that. But for the sake of this tutorial and this secondary swatch, I'm not too worried. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep inserting my hook as though I'm going to knit stitch and just slip stitch through there. Okay. 
Alright, and then I can chain one and fasten off. Alright, and that is how you do the Tunisian cable stitch. I hope today's tutorial was helpful for you all. If so, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. It helps YouTube to recommend my videos more often. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on awesome weekly content like this. I post Tunisian crochet tutorials every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. CST. Also, don't forget to check out my other various social media. I'm pretty much on everything except for Snapchat. And until next time, guys, happy making.